In this lesson, we'll learn how to create and use functions. To declare a function, we simply need to type function, the name of the function, some opening and closing parens, and then the keyword end. Now, unlike other languages, you do not use opening and closing curly braces for functions. That will cause an error. Then, within this function, you can define what this function is going to do. Here we'll have our function print to the console. Once it's defined, we can call the function. And in the terminal, there's hello world. We can also define functions with arguments. So we'll redefine do it and pass in what. Then we'll print the argument. Now when calling it, we'll pass in a string. And so the argument what is printed to the terminal. Go ahead and delete the first one. Take a look at the terminal and there it is again. If you define a function just using the keyword function, it becomes a function that's global to the entire application. Most of the time, we don't want to do that. We'll want to use the keyword local in front of the function. This then scopes the function to just this execution context, which is this particular window. We'll go over scope in a later lesson. We'll take a look at it again. There isn't any appreciable change, but know that any local keywords applied to functions or variables will perform much faster. Now, technically in Lua, if you have a function with a single argument, you don't need to use the parens when calling the function. And so here, notice that I left out the parens and we still get hello world. However, as soon as I add another argument, I'll need to use the parens. And let's change the print statement to. So now we get hello world on earth. Lua treats functions as what are called first class citizens. That means that we can assign functions to variables. So we'll create a new variable called foo and set it equal to the function do it. But we won't use the parens because if we do that, it would actually execute the function. Instead, we'll do it without the parens and now we'll call foo and pass the arguments that we would pass to do it. And there we have foobar. Another way to define functions is to define a local variable and set it equal to an anonymous function. I tend to use this method of function creation quite liberally within the course. And so here we'll call bar and then we'll see the result. It looks like we have an error and we forgot the concatenation. Let's put it back in. One nice feature of Lua is that you can create a function with a variable number of arguments. To do this, you'll create the function and then within the parens type dot, dot, dot. Then within the function to access each of these, you'll use a table called arg. So we'll print arg, then the index of the argument. So the first argument and the second argument. Now I won't write in any sort of checking to see if there are two arguments. If you were going to use this in your code, you'd want to write some logic to check for these arguments. So we'll call lots of args and the first argument and the second one. Okay, and take a look at the terminal, and there you see, hmm, I see. So that's particularly useful if you're defining your own classes. Another way in which functions are used is they're used within tables so that you're defining essentially objects. So a local 
table here, t, then t dot do it equals, and then you create a function. And then we go through the motions that we went through before. To call this function, t dot do it, and then Now take a look at the terminal, and there we have Corona for apps. Finally, you can return values with functions by using the return keyword. So we'll create a very simple function called add it. And this will return the result of the first argument plus the second argument. Then we'll set a variable and call it trace equals t dot add it and we'll pass two numbers. So what happens here is the add it function within the table t takes the first two arguments, adds them together, and then returns the result. And that result will then be piped into trace. Now we won't actually get the result because we need to print it to the window. So then after this, print trace. And there we go. That's particularly useful if you're going to create some custom methods for doing any kind of maybe vector math or other kinds of operations that need to combine things and then spit out values, uh, helper functions. This ends our lesson on creating and using functions.